Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. A large police presence at a local hotel. The discovery made inside one of the rooms there that had employees suspicious and what officers later found coming up. Plus. Why did you let me have him? I'm sorry. Tonight, family members sharing a recording of a conversation they say they had with a mother accused of abandoning her child. The latest in the case of baby James coming up. And the pandemic pushing a local theater to bring down the curtain. We speak with the president of the Bar Shop Jewish Community Center, but first. We begin at the border tonight where our crews have witnessed adults and children crossing the border into the Rio Grande Valley. One woman continuing her humanitarian effort for the migrants who cross there. Sister Norma Pimentel captured the world's attention after Pope Francis recognized her work. And tonight that work is continuing. While our crew was in the city of Panitas, it was only a matter of minutes before a group of migrants was spotted there in the brush. The Panitas Police Department says its officers often encounter these crossings year round. When it comes to family units, you, you don't see any resistance. You don't see them evading, uh, fleeing from us. They usually just uh, turn themselves in. Customs and Border Protection says just in the month of February for the Rio Grande Valley sector, over 16,000 family units and more than 11,000 unaccompanied minors were apprehended. Meanwhile, many of those migrants are taken to respite centers in McAllen, where Sister Norma and many volunteers offer to help out. The night team's Jonathan Cotto spoke with her to discuss what she's seeing now and how it compares to what was experienced in the past. Numbers are definitely going up. Not as quite as how much we saw in 2019 or even in 2014. Sister Norma Pimentel says she's not sure we can call this increase a crisis, but it can certainly become one. I think it can be a crisis if there's more of a, a fight between a political fight about what's happening rather than a collaborative effort to to help address and help the Border Patrol and help the families that are arriving. As far as the Catholic Charities efforts are concerned, this is where CBP drops off those family units for COVID-19 testing. Sister Norma says the few that do test positive are sent to a reserved hotel for quarantine. She says the many reasons why they're here in the first place still remains the same. They're here because obviously back home it's not safe. They fear for the lives of their children. The Remain in Mexico policy no longer applies to asylum seekers. Pimentel says those seeking asylum will now be able to seek a legal process from within the safety of the U.S. They're hopeful that maybe this time around they're going to have a chance to, to follow through with a, uh, their asylum cases, you know, which is something that they have always looked forward to. Pimentel says more needs to be done. Until we, uh, our countries figure out how to manage and handle what we're seeing and, and the root causes of why they come or address, we're going to continue to see just like we've seen in the past. She says it makes no difference who's in office and believes the problem is not what's happening at the border. The real problem, she says, it's what's happening in the migrants' countries, adding there is a need to work together and find solutions to provoke change. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, Sister Norma is expected to meet with Senators John Cornyn and Ted Cruz during their Senate delegation tour to the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas. We will, of course, be following that trip very closely. New on the night beat, suspicion raised when what was supposed to be an empty hotel room actually had three men inside, and that led to drug charges. Employees at this Red Roof Inn near Loop 410 in Ingram called police when they found the men inside the hotel room. Police say one of the men ended up running off but was caught. The other two men stayed in the room and followed the officer's commands. Police say meth was found in that room. No word on the exact amount. All three men facing burglary and drug charges. A child last seen several months ago, his mother under arrest. Tonight, the search for baby James continues, but his great aunt sharing a recording of a conversation she says she had with baby James' mother asking where that child is. You put him up for adoption? No, Delaney. Yes, I did. Mommy, I Delaney, can't. why did you let me have him? I'm sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? It's just not right. I can't. I can't. It's not right, Delaney. It's not right, but he's fine. Marisol Gomez says Delaney Chares admitted to giving baby James up for adoption, but it's unclear when this recording took place. According to an affidavit, police said Chares told them 
She had wanted to give up the child for adoption. That was when she was taken into custody back on Monday. Officers also found a bloody crib sheet, but still no word on where baby James is tonight. New developments in a shooting that left one man dead inside of his car. San Antonio police now tracked down that suspected shooter. 31 year old Francisco Miranda is facing a murder charge. Police say he's affiliated with a gang. The shooting happened last Thursday on South Augustine Avenue on the city's west side. Officers found David Garcia inside of a Mazda with a gunshot wound to the chest. He was pronounced dead there at the scene. Police say Miranda held someone at gunpoint, for forcing that person to drive him away from the scene. Witnesses were able to help officers track down Miranda, and he was arrested this morning. It has been on hold for much of the pandemic. Now jury selection in the Otis McCain trial is set to resume again on Monday. He's accused of killing SAPD detective Ben Marconi back in 2016. At one point, there was a discussion of moving the case out of town. Judge Ron Renhell says the parties have had the opportunity, but so far have not asked for a change of venue. If they did now, the judge says he would not grant it. Eight jurors have already been selected, Renhell plans to seat a panel of 12 jurors and three alternates. An update now on coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average now stands at 143 cases on average per 24 hours. That's a decrease since yesterday. One new death was reported today in our hospitals. Mayor Ron Nirenberg saying the data appears to show a plateau right now. 201 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized tonight. 75 in the intensive care unit and 41 patients are on ventilators. The domino effect of COVID-19 now taking down a beloved theater and leaving others struggling. It's been a difficult year for so many artists and those in the theater industry have been holding their breath to see what this next act will bring. The night team's Patty Santos tells us what that could look like for some in the industry. It's been brutal. We're probably close to 13 to $15 million behind. The Tobin Center for the Performing Arts hoping for brighter days in the spring and summer. Furloughs, cuts, and loans have helped it stay open at a minimum capacity. It's great to be an open building, so we're able to tell people we're here, uh, but it's another thing when you can actually get touring acts to come and perform. Fingers crossed that the crowds return when the traveling acts do. But the curtain is closing for good for places like the Vexler Theater after more than two decades. We have to let it go for now. The heart behind the program, Ken Frazier says the nature of the black box theater doesn't work well in a pandemic. Audiences love being this close to the, to the action, and I hear it from the actors. They love being this close to the audience uh, because of that energy exchange. The Bar Shop Jewish Community Center president and CEO says it was a difficult business decision for the nonprofit. It loses money on an annual basis. The JCC has invested close to $4 million uh, in the Vexel Theater over the last 22 years. Volunteers have worked for days to tear down and clear it out. Supporters and actors from near and far are reaching out in hopes of saving it. There's some people that are very frustrated and angry. They don't want it to go away. It would be a mistake for anybody to think that this isn't um, difficult for us to make this decision. Anyone that's ever been to the Vex knows that this space morphs and adapts and Fraser says this next scene change is sort of like that. Because the black box itself has never been permanent, this is not permanent. There's hope that somewhere down the future, the Vex will return for an encore. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. The NCAA apologizing to athletes today after video surfaced uh, showing a major difference between the men and women's basketball team's accommodations. The rough start coming ahead of the women's tournament here in San Antonio. Oregon forward Sedona Prince posted a video on Twitter showing what was supposed to be a workout area at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. But that area turned out to only contain a single set of dumbbells. The scene, when compared to a men's workout area in Indiana, filled with workout machines and equipment. Women want to lift too. Um, and just seeing that we're not asking for, you know, the, the equal or to have the exact same thing that the men get, but, you know, they can do a lot better than that. I apologize to the women's basketball student athletes, to the coaches, to the women's basketball committee for dropping the ball, frankly, on the weight room issue in San Antonio. We will get it fixed as soon. 
Disparities in food options also came up for discussion today. NCAA tournament officials said those issues are now being addressed. The tournament starts this Sunday. Still ahead on the night beat, orca whales off the Texas coast. We'll show you what was caught on camera coming up. And a special day for some medical students at the University of the Incarnate Word. We speak to the grads as they now take their next step amid this pandemic. And the CDC updating guidelines for students and teachers. What San Antonio plans to do next on the night beat. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issuing new guidance when it comes to schools and social distancing. The CDC says students in classrooms now only need to be three feet apart instead of six feet with masks. About the six feet rule still applies when students cannot wear masks. The CDC also saying the same groups of teachers and students should be kept together throughout the day. Metro Health here in San Antonio saying it's updating its guidance to align with the CDC and reminding everyone of the importance of wearing a mask. Back here at home, a big day for medical students at the University of the Incarnate Words School of Osteopathic Medicine. Today, match day was held at the campus. And being in a pandemic, it was a drive through style event. KSAT photojournalist Adam Higgins spoke with grads about their next steps. First class, had to figure out a lot of stuff out now. Thanks for representing uh, UIW's inaugural class. To be a part of the first class, what it means to me is to not only be able to accomplish my dreams, but to be able to help put things in place to where others can be able to experience what I'm experiencing right now. Well, the match ex experience, everything we've done up to this, of the four years of education has led up to this moment where we find the specialty that we're interested in. We apply to them and hopefully we get a response back. And if we get a response back, we have the interview. At the end of it all, you make a rank list, they make a rank list, and now we just wait around and if what they want match up in terms of the program and we get matched. This is the most terrifying moment of my life. Everything is full. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. I'm going to Tigmer, the Family Medicine Tigmer program in San Antonio. PM&R at University Hospital in San Antonio. <laughs> I matched at UT Dell. I matched hey. at uh, Alaska Providence. Staying right here. Colonel Medicine. Yeah. Number one choice. <laughs> I'm speechless right now. Where are you going? I'm going to the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> The University of Texas in Houston for anesthesiology. Now, anesthesiology at Baylor Scott and White in Temple. I'm going to deliver babies. You are going to deliver babies. Yes, you are. I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah, big, big whale, man. Yeah. Take a look at this, a group off the coast of Galveston capturing the moment a pod of orca whales swam up to their boat. Captain Sam Hardiman says they were about 120, 130 miles off the shore in an area called East Breaks. He says he sees pilot whales from time to time in the Gulf, but he described the sighting of these orcas as incredible. Orcas do live in the Texas Gulf, but rarely seen. According to the National Wildlife Federation, there could be as many as 500 orcas that live in the Gulf of Mexico. Hardiman said this encounter lasted about 30 minutes. Who knew? Yeah, that, that was news to me that orcas are in the Gulf until I read that story. Would have never guessed. I right. mean, I would. That's a good trivia question now. Definitely. Right? <laughs> On average, how many orcas are in the Gulf of Mexico? And now we know. About 500. 500. Old when I learned this. <laughs> yeah. But for that's how big right. the, the Gulf of Mexico is, 500. I mean, it's got to be statistically rare to you know to see them. Yeah. Let alone several. Mm-hmm. Right. Whoa. Mind blown. <laughs> Good thing you're not a seal out there swimming, right? You'll be okay. That's right. The circle sure. of life. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to show you some signs of spring around San Antonio. Look at this. Here we go. This is on our KSAT Connect app. Well, actually on our Weather Authority app, which then you can post these photos. There's some blue bonnets. That's right. It's that time of year. We've got the wildflowers and blue bonnets and... All kinds of good springtime stuff. We just need some good rainfall. Today we had nothing but sunshine. And you can see our nice sunset there. 
46 this morning, 72 this afternoon, and we're running below average both in the morning and the afternoon. The record high today, 90 degrees. And you look across the state, high temperatures range from 58 in Amarillo to 77 in Del Rio and Laredo and Brownsville up to 74. So we had fairly uniform temperatures. There wasn't a big temperature difference. And even right now, 48 in Lubbock, 51 in Junction, 60 here in San Antonio. You get to Corpus Christi and we're at 55 degrees. For the most part, we've dropped down into the 50s, but you see a few locations hanging on to the 60s. Bottom line, it's pleasant outside, comfortable, but you know, now that the sun has set and we've had a few hours of darkness, these temperatures fall off pretty quickly. Clear sky, calm wind, dry air, and so there's going to be a bit of a chill in the air tomorrow morning. If you're out this evening, long sleeves, light jacket, not a bad idea to have them handy tomorrow morning. We're looking at low to mid 40s for most of us. So early risers in Gonzales 41, Hondo 42, Sabinal, Uvalde about 42 in the morning. You get to Kerrville, Fredericksburg 37 to start your Saturday. Bernie about 39 degrees and Seguin 41. So again, early risers, bit of a chill by the afternoon. We warm up nicely and make it for the most part just above the 70 degree mark tomorrow afternoon. You haven't noticed humidity in a while. And we're not going to through the weekend. There will be a little spike here and there next week, but by and large, we're not going to be dominated by uh, mugginess and any real oppressive humidity. Unfortunately, in the sense that it takes humidity to make rainfall, and we've got clear skies across Texas now. Our next system, that's moving into the Pacific Northwest. You see this swirl right here, just west of Seattle and Portland. That swirl, that's our next upper disturbance. That's going to be dropping southward. And the real, the best energy from it and precipitation as well is likely to pass to the north of us as we get into next week. We're talking Monday evening. But at least parts of Texas, I think, will get some good rainfall, not necessarily just from this system, but then a secondary chance of rain from another system that moves in the middle of the week. So rain chances Monday and Wednesday. Don't get your hopes too high for good rainfall and widespread accumulations. I mean, we're looking at a 30 to 40 percent chance here Monday and Wednesday. And of course, we'll be fine tuning this forecast as the days go by and we get new and better information. Nonetheless, Again, here in South Texas, not looking like a big drought denter, but other parts of the state, especially off to the north, I think they, they could cash in on some good rain. And 68% of the state is in drought, by the way. So tomorrow, wall to wall sunshine, beautiful day just like today, pretty much the same. 44 in the morning, 71 in the afternoon, a light easterly breeze at 5 to 10. Sunday, similar, 40s in the morning, low 70s in the afternoon. Light southeasterly breeze at 5 to 10, but some morning clouds. You'll notice a little gray to start the day and then nothing but sunshine. By Monday, a bit breezy with that chance of rain later in the day. A few storms possible. Wednesday, a few storms possible. Notice no big temperature changes. Highs remain in the low to mid 70s. Looking good. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Spurs get a key piece of the puzzle back tonight as they make a visit to the land. Yeah, it was great to see DeMar back in the lineup, but what a performance tonight by Keldon Johnson where it got very dicey towards the end of this game after they got out to a big lead. When we come back, show you how the Spurs win again on the road tonight in Cleveland. That's that makeup game from the first half of the season and more lawsuits against Deshaun Watson filed today coming up. Missing four games where his father's funeral, DeMar DeRozan made his return tonight, and he did not miss a bead. DeRozan backing down the defender in Cleveland, turns baseline, pump fakes, knocks down the fallaway jumper, plus the foul, spurs up 12 to 3. Sharing is caring, also leads to great highlights. DeMar to Keldon Johnson to Drew Eubanks, who slams it down, spurs up 8. Look at that. Now, it spurs lead grows. Rudy Gay comes up with a steal, takes it back for the slam, spurs on 11 0 run, and a 15 point lead. Check out Keldon going strong to the rim, throws it down. Under a minute to go to Jante Murray on the attack. He gets the bucket plus a foul. Spurs up a dozen 54-42 at the break. Spurs keep their foot on the gas in the third quarter. 15-4 run. Fuels a 21-point lead. Then Patty Mills knocks down back-to-back -back three pointers. First, he sidesteps away from the defender on the left wing. Then the catch and shoot from the right wing to put the Spurs up 22. They would lead 81-66 going into the final quarter. Cavs keep it interesting. Cutting the lead down to 10. Jante Murray puts up the circuit shot there to dance at the top of the backboard before falling in. Keldon Johnson gets the offensive board. 
to put back 23 points lead the Spurs. Johnson with a career high 21 rebounds tonight. The last 21 rebound game from a Spur was back in 2013 by Tim Duncan. Cavs made it close to the end, but the silver and black hold on 116-110. It's definitely a, a, a honor to be in the company of, of one of the greats, you know. But uh, I mean, just gotta keep going, keep pushing. You know, can't be satisfied. I feel like um, we gotta go get one tomorrow. You know, from the first play to the last play, like he just played his tail off, um, got every loose ball, all the made so many winning plays for us to put us in the position to win. And um, I mean, twenty-one rebounds. They said right? It's un unreal, unreal. On their way to Milwaukee, we'll wrap up this road trip tomorrow night at 8 p.m. to the men's big dance in Indianapolis. The top-ranked Baylor Bears taking on number 16 Hartford Hawks. The Bears got off to a slow start. Started to roar late in the first half when Masio Teague drains a corner three. Baylor up 16 at the break. Davian Mitchell connects from the top of the arc, and Baylor is in control by 22. Then off the pick and roll, Flo Thamba throws down the two-handed punch. Bears roll on to the second round, 79-55. Masio Teague led Baylor with 22 points. Up next for the Bears will be the winner of the UNC. Wisconsin game. Six seed Texas Tech facing the Aggies of Utah State and the Red Raiders were down early in the second half. Clarence Nadalny gets the rebound and finds Terrence Shannon Jr. with a beautiful Euro step to even things up. Later Kyler Edwards makes a three-pointer. That's part of an 11-0 run by Tech. And they never look back. Texas Tech up 12. Now Mac McClung drives and hits a floater. McClung had a game by 16 points. Texas Tech wins 65-53. We'll face third seed Arkansas next. That's because Arkansas won their game today over Colgate 85-68. Wisconsin Wisconsin, by the way, over North Carolina. North Carolina is out. Wisconsin is in, and that's who Baylor plays next in that part of the tournament. And now you see the South region as well. North Texas with a big win tonight in their first round game, pulling off the upset, and they're taking on the winner of Villanova and Winthrop being played right now. More trouble for Deshaun Watson, I should say, before we go to that. How about Houston in the Midwest region? Houston is 87-56 over Cleveland State. They're advancing. They'll take on Rutgers, who's now leading in the second half, 50-47. to We'll wait to see who wins that game. More trouble for Deshaun Watson next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Four more lawsuits have now been filed against Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson alleging inappropriate contact and sexual assault as three previous lawsuits that had been filed indicate. That brings to seven the total number of lawsuits filed by attorney Tony Busby that allege a pattern of behavior towards massage therapists. According to ESPN, the lawsuit says six of the women claim it was a one-time incident where one woman says she was assaulted multiple times. But get this, Busby said today he's going to file an additional five lawsuits bringing the total number to 12 and has talked to another 10 women who have now come forward. I've only been reached out to informally by an individual with the Houston Police Department that I'm familiar with. I, I wouldn't say a friend, but certainly somebody I know. Um, and our intention is to put together a package and to submit it to the police department. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of courage, yeah. uh, to step forward uh, when you're dealing with somebody powerful. Now, Deshaun Watson has hired Rusty Harden as his attorney, and he said in part today, I'm extremely proud to represent Deshaun Watson and wholly stand behind him against what we believe are meritless allegations. However, we will wait to comment in detail until we've completed our review of the numerous evolving allegations from Mr. Busby. We will respond next week and ask you to keep an open mind until we do so. The NFL announcing their blockbuster $110 billion TV deal. They'll pay the league $10 billion a year until 2033 and puts ABC back at the Super Bowl game. The network confirming ABC will air at least three Monday night football games and simulcast two Saturday games along with postseason including the Super Bowl in 2026 and 2030. And five-time major champion Phil Mickelson has committed to playing the Valero Texas Open. His first time back at the JW Merritt TPC Resort course since 2016. Lefty now joins Ricky Fowler, who's committed to playing the Valero Texas Open earlier this week. Mickelson won the Masters in 2004, 2006, and 2010, and took the PGA Championship in 2005 and the Open Championship in 2013. So we're getting a very good feel coming up. Good chance to see some great players. You got it. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. That's all our time. Thanks for watching the night beat. We'll see you tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. for GMSA. Have a good night and a great weekend. Me, but.